Now let's get into it. Q&A. Let me get out of here. What's this banner doing here? Da, da, da. Bruce Combs, I would love to. Great. Ah, great. Someone said, will DCA be on Thursday? No, because I'm not traveling. So we should have it on a Friday. It'll be on Ben's channel. And you know, Ben's going to be super happy because he gets to rub it in my face. I told you not to buy alts, bro. I told you not to buy alts. Yeah, he was right. You know, I, but I still, the thing was, I didn't know who was right. So I just hedged my bet. I just DCA'd what I call micro DCAing. And I just did this other thing, which was took profits along the way. It's not so bad. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be here in the next 10, 20 years, but uh, still, it gives me some some breathing room when I take profits because now I still have cash on the side. It's not so bad. Let's see. Amy's here. Hello, Amy. Vicky's here. I'm sure the usual suspects are here. Ben's in the Cryptoverse site. Yes, in the Cryptoverse, Ben. That's too is what? It's a great website. Oh, Yeah. That's Hector. That's if you want to save save money. That's what you eat. Rosy frijoles. That's right. Beardy's here. The same same spot. Where is a uh, crypto golfer? And Tesla and everybody else. I'm sure you guys are here. Jay and Chow. Contagion is here. Too big lender. BlockFi and Genesis probably lent a few bucks to Sam. Is not being bailed out. Lenders have to absorb the full hit, but they got wrecked by three AC in the minors. Three ACs was the first domino to fall. And Jay and Chow's got a good point. I don't know what's going on with BlockFi and the rest of them. I don't trust anybody. Anybody. Can't even trust your own mother. C CS has got a good point. Rob, can you imagine more uncertainty on this realistically? Hmm. Yeah, and it'll probably come from governments and the fear of clampdown and regulations. So I just want to make this crystal clear. This whole market will probably get much worse or a little bit worse than what it is now. It's not like this was the worst day. Worst days ahead of us. Let's be honest. I know that sucks, but if you can just accept that and just say, well, you know, probably is going to be it. So what do I do? What are the things that I can control? Well, you can control what you invest into, how much you invest into, the time frame that you invest into, and how you roll along with it. You don't have to invest anything. You can just watch me. And just go, well, I'll just watch some other videos and not do a damn thing and just sit here on my uh, piles and piles of cash until things get uh, pick up. It's up to you. But as far as uncertainty, we'll probably get more uncertainty. There will be other exchanges that are going to uh, become insolvent, maybe not as big as FTX, but who knows. I think uh, once that happens, you'll see more of a drop and we'll see. I told, I, firmly believed that we did not hit our low that everybody says june was the low well it wasn't because we hit a lower low today so whatever and uh i was hoping i was wrong actually but here we are so as bad as it is right now we still haven't dropped as much as i thought we would and uh just expect for it to get worse again did i i never thought this would be the great time frame i thought this time frame would suck and i've been talking about this forever there's this thing. It's called the four-year cycle. And it's uncanny how well it's actually held up. So we have a having all-time high dip rate. This was 2012, 2013, 2014, 15. And then what happens again? 2016, we had a, a Bitcoin halving, just like we had in 2012. Next year, we had an all-time high. Everything got overheated, and it dropped off, and then it dropped off even more in 2018 and 19. Same thing's going to happen again. And it's, it's already been proven right so far until it doesn't. I'm not saying it has to do this. I'm just saying I think it is. I could be wrong, and it's not exact. 2020, we did have a halving. That's right, correct? 2021, did we not have an all-time high? Yes, we did. In 2022, did we not tumble pretty low? Yes, we did. And then isn't, even that, isn't that amazing towards the end? Bitcoin was just doing this, and it just dropped off the cliff. I mean, for other reasons, right? I mean, last time. And now here we are. It looks like the same thing again into 2023. And oh yeah, everybody's calling for a recession. How long do recessions last? About 18 months. So 2023 and 2024 are shot. To me, those are just accumulation years anyhow. And 2025, 2026 are going to be the big time. Maybe. I could be wrong. I mean, I'm not Nostradamus for Pete's sakes. Toby, you're welcome. Thanks for stopping by. 
Uh, new type, was crypto.com on that list? They said they'll do approved reserves. I don't know, but I never really liked crypto.com for some reason, but I, I was wrong on them. They seem to be holding up pretty well. Are they going to hold up to this? Time will tell. Tostones, probably. I mean, we're in Puerto Rico, right? I don't like Tostones. Rice and beans, yes. My favorite meal. I'm not here. Netherlands is here. <laughs> Nikolai says, I had about 5% on Binance. Today is negative 0.5%. Michael's got a point. Uh, it's nothing to complain about. The quicker we sell 50% of holdings, the quicker we reach the bottom. Actually, quite true, actually. If uh, we all start selling and, you know, but then it's it only takes one to say, I'm not selling, or it only takes one to say, I'm going to buy it up. But that's for everybody to do. Me personally, honestly, uh, I took profits on the way. I told everybody I was going to take profits. Remember those videos? I said, hey, I took profits today. And a lot of people were like, that's good. Good for you. And there are some knuckleheads like, you shouldn't take profits because we're going to keep going up. Sure. And then here we are. <clears throat> and uh, today, my, uh, my DCAs triggered and they bought this morning. Now, remember, the DCAs that I buy, some are once a day, like Bitcoin, Ethereum. And other ones are once a week. And I'm, you know, I've talked about those before, but this is just where we're at. So, eh, I think I'll be okay. Oh, this is really going to upset you, Shallon. I hope Gareth Soloway isn't right about Bitcoin at 13K. You know, his worst case scenario was Bitcoin hits 3K. Yeah, it sucks. Ah, Adrian, thanks for coming by. <laughs> Beardy is Michael D saying an EOS today. EOS. Oh, that was it. That was that was supposed to be the next Ethereum killer. Oh, I got crushed on that one. That was a long time ago, though. <laughs> Live the cares the rub. You don't want to. I'm a very boring person. Uh, Nate says I believe Soul will come back as well. Could be right. I mean, look, it's amazing, isn't it? We just had this really great news about Solana. You know, Google picked them up and said, hey, we're going to be uh, a node operator. We're going to do the staking. We're going to allow them for uh, Google Cloud services. Also, Solana was picked up by uh, Facebook or Meta uh, for their Instagram uh, for, the, for minting and selling NFTs right on Instagram. It was Solana and uh, ah, what was the other one? Not Genso Kishi. Um, Polygon. So those Two big news items that came out, people dumped into Solana. I think they did. And now they went, it went all the way up from that great news. And now it's like, what? There's only so many wallets that control so much Solana. What? Sam Bankman Fried was the main person that loves it. And then down it goes. But uh, I don't know. I think Solana is a pretty fine project myself. It's just that it goes out every so often. But hey, who's perfect? I don't know. That's why I spread things around. Like I'm not that smart. I need to like diversify, right? So like real estate and crypto and stocks and things like that. I even started to buy a little little meta because I mean price earnings ratio is looking pretty good. Just saying, we are in the anger phase. I can see that. Oh, and Bicky, Bicky's right. So Tom, there was a a story about how Tom Brady and Giselle Bunchen. They uh, had put a bunch of money into FTX to diversify. Ugh. It looks like they're not going to be doing too hot. That's not the reason for the divorce, I don't think. <laughs> the four-year cycle, I call, I call it the colonoscopy cycle. <laughs> Price. Aaron says, uh, for small investors, gas fees can kill moving off exchange for some crypto like ETH. Do you have advice for small investors that have a sub 100 bucks and a coin on exchange? Yeah, here's the advice. You can lose $93, 100%, or you can lose $7 in exchange fees. I don't, that's all I can tell you. Um, better safe than sorry. I, that's, a, that's a jerk way to say it, but it's just the truth. Oddball says, Rob, when you take profits, you buy the assets, you sold lower prices. Sometimes. Uh, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just like uh, investment properties are becoming cheaper. 
So we're looking into uh, purchasing specific uh, real estate here in Puerto Rico, some more. And actually, I'm going to start bringing to you guys uh, the different real estate that I'm looking at here in Puerto Rico. And you can make a decision. And I've got a great real estate agent. And uh, I'll just going to show you what I'm doing. So I think that'll maybe that'll help people to realize that you don't have to be a Dogecoin millionaire. And there's other things to get to look into and do research and stuff like that. <laughs> Rob, I like your rich selection of basements to film from. Yeah, well, my mom, she's got two different places. Like, uh, this is a green screen in my mom's basement, waiting for some meatloaf. And uh, yeah, she's very nice. <laughs> uh, so Jair says, Rob, how do you feel about stable coins? They're not spot. Is the only truly safe place cash right now? I don't mind stable coins. I like them better when I can get yield, but I guess we just figured that's not going to work out. So to me, like that's why, you know, there's a reason why you see like, let me show you. So there's a reason why you'll see things like, like Tether and uh, USD coin in the last hour go up. It's because everybody's putting, well, now, and now, okay. And because everybody's putting, they're, they're putting all their, they're selling all their crypto and they're putting in the stable coins. Do I like stable coins? I like USD coin more than I like Tether personally, but that's just me. You can leave whatever you want to. But the thing is, you have to understand if you put it into a stable coin and that stable coin is sitting on an exchange, it does you no good because they will still lock you out at some point. I'm not saying they all will. So again, Make sure that you move your stables to wherever you want to. I mean, I think me personally, even a MetaMask wallet is more stable than these exchanges right now. At least you control your keys, right? I'm just saying. Champ says, what will happen to Solana? I don't know. I mean, it'll probably, like everything else, drop. I just don't know how much more it'll drop and for how long. But uh, again, I think as people start to really get into it and uh, they're like, wow, this is these exchanges are going down. So that means that, you know, I need to sell everything. That's not the, that's not what it is. And I think people are unfairly looking at Solana and going, well, it's a bad project because now Sam can't prop it up. Maybe time will tell, but it is interesting though. And Charles Hoskinson talked about this on his channel a lot about VC backed uh, cryptos and digital assets. He goes, I gotta tell you, it's right. He's like, you know, these, uh, these VCs, I mean, they prop everything up, but uh, once the S hits the fan, they're out of there, things collapse. And I was like, hmm. hmm. And of course, now we see, of course, just how well, I mean, Cardano's up 0.1%. 10% for huh, 24 hours beats, beats Bitcoin for now. So, yeah, whatever. And then what else? What other questions do you guys have? Charles is awesome. I sure would like Charles to come on the show. He had first agreed, or well, his handlers had agreed to it, and then he then they backed out. I don't know. There's another part of my cool green screen where I'm able to show you my dogs walking in the background doing nothing. And there goes Chloe. Uh, <laughs> so what does that mean for Aptos? Good token, yes. Uh, watch the video from CTO Larson. That's all I got to say. Ben Rotasia, I want to say thank you, man, for doing all the hard work you do on Twitter to get a little of those scammers. So I appreciate you. What? Didn't? That's a sick invite. Thanks. I got to go on a beer run. Thanks, Rob. See you around. Just kidding. Uh, what do you think of the guys over at uh, Swissborg? Alex Fossil and his brother? You guys are great. I love those guys. You know, those are the guys that introduced me to uh, Gensu Kishi. And that was a banger of a project. He's doing, it's actually going to launch uh, November 29th or 30th. And it's one of my, my best performing uh, early round investments. So uh, shout out to Alex and his brother. Perhaps those sole developers will head to near, fingers crossed. Who knows? I don't know. Jing and Chow, always bring the great questions. If uh, FTX falls and then other exchanges or hash rates plummet due to harsh winters, 
We will see exchanges and miners sell reserves of Bitcoin and ETH, altcoin junk, Bitcoin probably to 10K and ETH to 300, 400. You have a point, uh, especially with just how difficult it's getting for Bitcoin miners. I mean, electricity is quite expensive, right? Depending on where you're at. So imagine these Bitcoin miners, as the Bitcoin price starts to fall, well, they got to pay their bills, right? They got to keep the lights on. So what do they do? Well, they mine Bitcoin, so they have to sell Bitcoin. They sell Bitcoin, and of course, it drops the price. And the next time, they have to sell more Bitcoin because the price has dropped even more. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but it is a domino effect. And Jay and Chow's got a great point. Uh, Bachelor Malik, Binance Monopoly is in danger. It's very shady and coming future is very skeptical. There's two ways to look at this. So I said... Once I saw that CZ put out that tweet about how they were going to uh, liquidate all their FDT holdings for tokens, and uh, he did something else. I said, man, that's amazing. You just uh, created a monopoly in, uh, in two tweets or in, a, in, in, in one tweet. Um, and that was it. So there was a thing from Bitcoin Magazine. They said that if, I'm not for sure this is 100% correct, but they said that if, if Binance acquired FTX, that would be 80% of the global crypto market. And I was like, I don't know if that's true. So let's go to nomics. I'm back on forward slash exchanges and take a peek boo on that ado. So let's shift this out by the volume percentage. Now this is in, what the heck is AX? This is by... Uh, Percentage volume by the next last 24 hours. I don't know what. I, so 20% is Binance, AX. I don't know what that is. Uh, Bybit, OKX, BingX, uh, Mexi, and now of course FTX is down down the hole because they stopped. But they were like two or three. So again, I'm not for sure. Well, if you look at percent of trades, 68% of trades is Binance. So and FTX is 11. So let me do some quick math here. Yeah, that, that would make that makes sense. But again, uh, the volume and percentage trades might be a little bit different there. Ooh, scary. And if that's going to happen, that's a monopoly. And there's going to be some uh, some antitrust laws passed. I mean, we have antitrust laws here in America. You can't have a monopoly. I know Amazon's a monopoly, but whatever. Lucas has a point. The network does go down as far as Solana. I don't know about constantly, but it does go down. There is DDoS attacks and all the things I'm talking about. I think it's a problem. What? Sol is $9 on Bybit? Oh, Lucas, uh, by the way, text me because there's going to be a change tonight. <laughs> what the hell happened to Solana? You should watch this. I had a pretty good video about this just coming up. Bruce Chalmers, CZ barely spends money. I think he is safe. There was a great tweet that he put out. I want to read it to you guys. Tell me if this isn't the right way to do things. It's right here. This is what CZ put out to his, uh, his staff, all of Binance and Binance U.S., and he even said, he goes, in the spirit of transparency, might as well share the actual note. This was just a couple hours ago. Binancians, given the events, I want to reiterate a few points. One, we did not master plan this or anything related to it. It was less than 24 hours. Sam called me, and I had very little knowledge of what was going on. I thought I wanted to do an OTC deal, but that was wrong. Here we are. As due diligence for the deal is ongoing, I want to remind everyone, do not trade FTT. If you have a bag, you better sit on it, or pretty much you're going to get fired. So don't trade it. Three, do not comment on the deal. Four, FTX is, and this is the big one. FTX going down is not good for anyone in, in, in the industry. We can debate this all day long about if this is good or bad. We can also debate if CZ wanted this to happen and orchestrated that to happen. I don't know. I don't know. And I really, I mean, nothing I can do about it anyhow if he did. So I'm just here to tell you the facts of what's going on. But he did say, again, I got to agree with him here. Do not view it as a win for us. User confidence is severely shaken, as we see. Regulators will scrutinize exchanges even more. 
Licenses around the globe will be harder to get. And people now think we're the biggest and will attack us more, but that's okay. We used to be being big and open. We must significantly increase our transparency. That's the thing you talk about, the proof of reserves, insurance funds, a lot more to come in this area. We have a lot of tough work ahead of us. Let's get to work. So I got to tell you, if you think that that's a lock that he orchestrated this and you want this to happen, you understand that this makes it extremely hard for him to operate. And also, I will say this. So Bill Gates and Microsoft and Steve Jobs from Apple, there was a point in time when Microsoft was crushing, just crushing Apple. I mean, unceremoniously, just destroying it. And there was a point where S Steve and, and Apple was on the brink of bankruptcy. You know what Steve Jobs did? He called up Bill Gates and he says, I need a loan. And Bill Gates said, why would I give you a loan? I want to crush you. He says, no, you don't want to crush me. He goes, because if you crush me, then you're going to have the government come against you as far as antitrust laws. And second of all, if you crush me, where's your competition going to be? You need me to be around. You need me to compete with. Give me the loan. And I'll be damned if the guy didn't give him the loan. So again, think about that story before you think about, oh, CZ Bunch just did that. And that's just, it. that's just the truth. I don't think that's how it was. Ah, crazy days, Corey. Crazy days. Finance. <laughs> Could be so, could be so. I think Dodd's got a great point. Who wants to take a look at, let's see, uh, Bitcoin. Uh, ah, here we go. Let's take a look at some whale balls. Here, take a look at this. So there's a website called bitinfocharts.com. If you click on uh, Bitcoin, and then it's uh, richest addresses somewhere up here. They'll, they'll show it to you. So let's see. Some of the, most of these are labeled like wallet number one, Binance, shocker. Wallet number two, Bitfinex, cold wallet. But wallet number three, no one seems to really understand who that is. Some people have, they think they know what it is and maybe, I don't know. But they got almost 1% of all Bitcoin coins. Let's see what they're doing, huh? Son of a gun. What's the date today? The 10th? The 9th. You know what they did? What? They bought, yeah, yesterday, they bought almost 2,000 Bitcoin. Well, let that be a lesson for you. No oh, cancel just earlier. I'm hungry. So let this be a lesson uh, that uh, watch. You don't have to do it 